Next up is the data modeling workspace. So as I mentioned in the introduction, MySQL Workbench's data modeling capabilities allow you to create and manage database models in a highly visual way. Though I think this definition actually kind of sells this particular feature a bit short because it's actually capable of much more than that. For instance, suppose you were working on a new project which required a database. Using the data modeling tool, we can create what's known as an EER model or enhanced entity relationship model, which will embody all of the features of the new database, including its relationships, again, in a highly visual way, as you'll soon see. You can then synchronize this model with your MySQL server. Therefore, you can import this visual diagram into the database and create the desired database schema that is embodied by that model. Furthermore, should changes to that data schema occur outside of MySQL Workbench and of course work their way into the schema as found in the MySQL database server, you can then synchronize those changes back to your MySQL Workbench data model. So it's a very convenient way to build and maintain your database schemas over time. It's definitely worth taking a few minutes to kind of explore the features at your disposal. So to get started, let's go ahead and create a new EER model by clicking the icon shown at the bottom. And just as was the case with the previous workspace, a new tab will be created. Now, MySQL Workbench has this funny default behavior of calling every newly created model uh, MyDB, which doesn't make a lot of sense, particularly because I think you're going to want to match the model name with that of the actual database. So you can change this by right-clicking on the name and choosing Edit Schema. And in the Name field, which appears, you can go ahead and change that to whatever you please. So let's assume we are creating a new database for development purposes on our local computer, so I'll call it Dev underscore Example. Now once you mouse out of the Name field, you'll be prompted to confirm that you want to rename all schema occurrences associated with this name. So go ahead and say yes. If you close that tab, you'll see that we have the new name associated with the model, at which point you can begin adding tables. So let's just go ahead and add a new table, which we'll call customers, and then go ahead and we'll just add two columns to the customers table. Starting with the primary key per usual, I'll remove that odd naming convention that MySQL Workbench likes to use, just calling our primary key ID. It's an integer, it's a primary key, not null, unsigned, and finally AI for auto increment. We'll just add one more column called name. The default Veracare type pops up. We'll just change the maximum size to 255. And again, also make this column not null. Go ahead and just press the X to close that tab. You'll see that our new customers table has been created. Go ahead and edit that table at any later point, if you please. Changing the name, adding columns, changing column names. So you certainly could continue adding tables in this manner. However, I'd also like to demonstrate another even more visual way to go about adding and maintaining your table schema information. And that's done by way of a diagram. So go ahead and double click on the diagram icon and you'll see that this grid appears. Alongside the name of our new model, dev underscore example, with the tables associated with that model. Now what you can do is you can drag any existing tables out onto the grid, offering an even more visual way to kind of conceptualize what this schema is ultimately going to look like. Now what else you can do is you can actually create new tables within this grid-based structure. And you can do that by clicking this icon, which will in turn change your mouse cursor. And we'll just find an empty space on the grid, press down on the mouse, and then double click the newly created table to perhaps most notably change its name. We'll call it States. So this is going to contain a list of United States states. We will create the primary key of ID. 
and change this to tiny int. You can type in your data types or you can find them on the list. There we go, tiny int, primary key, not null, unsigned, and finally auto increment. And we'll just add one more column. Again, we'll call it name. And although I think 45 would work, we'll just change that to 255. And we'll also make this not null. Right? We'll close the tab. And now we have a second table added to our data model. Now, what's really interesting is we can bind foreign keys relationships as we had done in previous sections by way of the MySQL command line client. We can create these relations visually using this EER diagram interface. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and double click on customers. We're going to add one more column. We're going to call it state ID. And that's going to be a tiny int. And just like the state's ID column, we want it to be not null and unsigned. Once that's done, you can click the foreign keys tab. We can call this whatever we please, but we'll just use state ID to keep things nice and straightforward. Once I tab over, it's going to ask you what the referenced table is, so where that associated key is in the foreign table. That's in the states table, so we'll select that. And then the column associated with that foreign key is the state ID, and it references the ID column found in the referenced table. We can set our options. So on update, we want that to cascade. Same thing for delete, if we so choose to do so. And that's it. And you'll notice now that the relationship is made apparent visually which binds these two tables together. In fact, you can even highlight the relationship line and it will highlight the foreign key and the primary key found in the two tables. So very, very easy way to build and maintain your table schemas. But what I'd like to show you next is another very, very cool feature, which allows you to, again, push these changes to your MySQL server. So we'll go ahead and save these changes to a workbench model file, which you'll see is identified here, save as type. I'll just save this on the desktop. We'll call it dev underscore example. And I'll save this file. Next up, we can go to the database tab found at the top and forward engineer this model as we're going to push it into the MySQL database. You have a number of different options at your disposal. Press next. We want to export the MySQL table objects. Next, it's going to show us the SQL query commands, which are going to create these tables and relationships. And if we scroll down, you'll even see the foreign key constraint for state ID is added to customers, as we would expect. I'll press next again. We have a stored connection. We want to push this into localhost. And finally, we will execute those changes. It tells us it's been done successfully. Now, if I go ahead and press close, then work through all of my tabs and I will enter my password. Now, if I run show databases, you will see that the dev underscore example database is now available. Now we'll use dev underscore example, finally show tables, and you'll see that the two tables have in fact been added. So very straightforward, very user friendly way to go about creating your tables and manage them over time. So next up, let's take a look at the third workspace, which allows you to administrate various aspects of your MySQL server.